if anybody, anybody at all asks you <laughs> just whose I am, the answer is very, very simple. Tell them I am redeemed. And I know that is not only my testimony. I know that is your testimony as well, that you are redeemed. And the Bible says, the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom the Lord has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. And so it's just um, a privilege and honor. Uh, it is glorious to know beyond the shadow of a doubt that you have been redeemed by the blood of the lamb, by Jesus, by his sacrifice that he performed on Calvary's cross to thousand years ago and yet and yet that blood still flows that blood still works that blood is still in operation that blood will never ever ever lose its precious power aren't you glad i know you are i know you are listen that's why you are here that's why you are here. The only reason we can gather together in faith and in hope is because we know beyond the shadow of a doubt that we have been redeemed. And we know who have redeemed us. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus has redeemed us by his precious blood. So welcome, welcome one and all to our joint Bible study session on tonight. And just to let you know um, that we are going to be taking a break for the month of August. So this will be our last session together until I believe it is September the 6th, the first week in September, right after Labor Day, we will be resuming Okay, but we are going to just uh, take a break for the month of August. Many of you are on vacation and uh, doing different things and, you know, going out, enjoying the, the sun and the ability to be outdoors and so forth. So uh, we, we honor that time and to allow you to, you know, get a break as well. And so we will be um, ending our Bible study. Um, with this session on tonight and then resuming on September the 6th. And so we are going into our session. Uh, we're going to ask um, Elder Barbara uh, Crummel if she would um, open us um, in prayer tonight. And then we also have... Um, Rise Community Church with us as well. And so we're going to have a Teresa Barksdale to um, give us our closing prayer at the end of the session. All right. So Elder Barbara, if you can open us in prayer, please. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Father God, in the precious name of your son, Jesus, mm -hmm. Lord, we come tonight as always to uh, say thank you. Yes. yes Lord. We thank, thank you, God, for your Ooh, goodness, uh, your mercy, and your tender, loving care. How you watched over us all day long uh, so that we could come together tonight to study your word. Yes. Thank you. Father, thank you. I speak peace and blessings over everyone on the call. Yes, I Lord. speak on the Zoom. I speak peace and blessings over our pastor, yeah. Reverend Dr. Donnelly Dunnigan Sr. I speak peace and blessings over Pastor Adelicon in the precious name of Jesus. I yeah, pray peace you. and blessings over our brothers and sisters as we come tonight in love and fellowship. Now, God, yes. I again want to say thank you. I praise you. I give you honor and glory mm -hmm. in Jesus' mighty name and my soul and your soul says amen and amen. Amen and amen indeed. Praise the Lord. 
for his goodness, for his grace, and for his mercy. Yes. So we thank you so much as we are gathered together one more time in our study time together. And so um, we are continuing in our series. It has been um, quite a, a series as we have been going through the, the um, prayer of the righteous. And we are looking at the foundation, the form, and the fruit of prayer. And so as we have been doing this, we, we know because we are healthy, dynamic disciples, we know that if we don't have any prayer, then we don't have any power. If we have a little prayer, well, there's a little bit of power, but with much prayer, there is much power. But that much prayer is qualified. It is a qualified prayer to have the much power available in the prayer. It must be the earnest prayer of a righteous person. And to be righteous is to be in right standing with God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit through the blood of the lamb. And so it is this kind of prayer prayed by the righteous person that has great power and it produces wonderful results. And so as we look at these three aspects of prayer, the foundation of prayer, we know what it is. It's really simple. It's talking and listening to God. And we have been doing this through the practice of the habit of the spirit. That's what we've been doing. And it has been just extraordinary in developing us as healthy, dynamic disciples. And we've been looking at the various forms of prayer. We've looked at them in the Old Testament, the various Hebrew words. And now we have come to the New Testament, looking at the Greek words for prayer and really gleaning from the lives of various individuals and understanding of these forms of prayer. And as we are doing that, we also see the fruit of the prayer. In other words, the wonderful results that are obtained as a result of the prayers of the righteous. And so just in way of review, because everybody isn't always on every single week. And besides that, you know, review is good because um, it helps to solidify the things that we are studying and have been studying. All right. So we began, first of all, with the ATAR prayer, A-T-A-R, which is to ask God earnestly or anxiously to do something. And that's what wicked Manasseh did. Yeah, God punished him by allowing him to be in captivity. But while he was there, the captivity worked, the punishment worked because he prayed earnestly. And guess what? The fruit was he was delivered and restored to his kingdom. And then the paga prayer, P-A-G-A, -A, paga prayer, that is to earnestly intervene to God on behalf of others. See, that um, a ta prayer was a prayer for oneself, but now the paga prayer is for others. And we see that with Moses. Oh my goodness. Moses had such a heart for the people. And when they sinned, with the golden calf, worshiping, imagine a golden calf and saying, this is the God that brought you out of Egypt, O Israel. What? Are you kidding me? And you know you were praying to Yahweh and now you're praying to a calf that was made out of gold? Are you kidding me? Well, that's what God said. Are you kidding me? And I told you already, thou shalt have no other gods before me. That was the number one command that God gave at Mount Sinai. 
And now they are breaking the very first command and God is not happy one little bit. And he tells Moses, Moses, listen, I'm going to destroy them stiff-necked wicked people and I'm just going to start over with you. <laughs> but here is Moses, his Pagat prayer when he intercedes on behalf of the wicked people. They don't deserve it. But listen, that's what intercession is all about. And he reminds God of the covenant he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give his descendants the land and bring them into the promised land. And so based on those intercession of Moses, God relented. He did not kill them all, but there was still punishment and 20,000 people died in a plague. Now, see, Moses' intercession is a type of the intercession that Christ does on our behalf. That's what the Bible tells us, that Jesus ever lives to make intercession for you and for me. So Jesus prays a paga prayer on behalf of us. Who does he pray to? He prays to the Father because we have an accuser. Yes, Satan accuses us before God, just like he accused Job before God. But we have an advocate, Jesus Christ. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad he not only saved us, but he also intercedes for us. And that's what he does before the Father. And the fruit of his prayer is evident because he is able, able to show the Father his nail-scarred hand and said, for their sin, I've already paid the price for them and therefore they can be forgiven. All right. So that's the Atar prayer, the Pagat prayer, and then we have the Shama prayer, S-H-A-M-A. -A. And that simply has the idea of for God to pay attention to the request with the idea of receiving an answer. And Habakkuk the prophet, we see this Shema prayer with him when he was so upset because of all the injustice, idolatry, the wickedness that was going on among God's people in the nation of Judah. And so he was saying, God, how can you allow all of this uh, confusion and, and sin and idolatry, how can you allow that to continue? And God basically said to him, you know, Habakkuk, I got you, I already got the plan in place, but just so that I can uh, ease your fears in your prayer, I'm just going to let you know what my plans are. And I am going to have the wicked Babylonians to come and judge my people and take them into captivity. Well, well, Habakkuk did not like the fruit of his prayer. He did not like the answer. You know, sometimes we get an answer from God that we really don't like. That's not what we wanted to hear. And so he prayed again and says, well, God, why? Because the Babylonians are more wicked than your people. And so he got an answer. He got an answer. See, he's righteous. Habakkuk, the righteous prayer, he received an answer. And God just simply told him, look, don't worry. Don't worry. There's enough judgment to go around. And the Babylonians, they too will be judged for their wickedness. And so the fruit of the prayer, the fruit of the answer is that Habakkuk gives praise to God because he recognizes that God is sovereign and the judge of all the earth will do what is right. And then with the 
Pagat prayer and the Shema prayer, we also have the Hanan prayer, asking God to be gracious and kind. And we see this with Solomon as he was dedicating the temple, asking God to hear the humble and earnest request when his people pray. Not necessarily pray at the temple or even in the temple, but simply to pray towards the temple, in the direction of the temple, wherever God's people may be. Because Solomon knew what the word of God said, that if they continue to disobey, that God would scatter his people and allow them to be taken into captivity. And so um, knowing God's word, listen, when you pray, you got to know God's word and pray in accordance with his word. That's what makes your prayer righteous and powerful. And so he prayed, when they pray towards this temple, when you hear their prayer, forgive, forgive. He's asking for forgiveness in advance. And listen, that's what we have as well. We have forgiveness in advance. We simply, we have to ask for forgiveness. We have to repent and ask for it. But we know that we have forgiveness in advance. Why? Because 1 John 1, 9 says, if you confess your sin, he our God, our Father is faithful and just to forgive us. Forgive, there it is. Forgive us of our sin and then to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So when we mess up, mm -mm, don't run away from God. Why? Why? Run towards the one who is willing and able to forgive and to restore. And so we see an example of this Hanan prayer with Daniel when he was in Babylonian captivity. He prayed towards Jerusalem, praying for God to keep his promise so that the Jews would return after their 70 years were up. And so <laughs> Daniel, soon after praying that prayer, he was called in to interpret the handwriting on the wall. And that very night, that very night, based on the interpretation, Babylon has been weighed in God's scales and have been found wanting. They do not live up to God's standard. And so the Babylonians were judged, just as God had told Habakkuk, I'm going to judge the Babylonians. And here is it coming to pass where God judges Belshazzar because they had this drunken feast and had violated the holy vessels they had taken from the temple. Nebuchadnezzar had taken from the temple when he invaded Judah. And here was his grandson, Belshazzar, having a drunken feast and, 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 and pouring wine into the holy vessels. And God said, enough, enough already. And God judged them that very night. Belshazzar was killed and the Persians took over the Babylonian empire. And then it was the Persian king, the Medes and the Persians um, took over. And so it was the Persian king, Cyrus, who gave the decree for the Jews to return to Judah and to rebuild the temple. Oh my, oh my, the fruit of this powerful prayer. And then in addition to the Hanan prayer for God to be gracious and kind, we have the Na prayer, N-A, Na, which is short for Hosanna, Hosanna, which simply, this prayer is simply a prayer of exclamation. Oh Lord, save us. It is a prayer for salvation. Save us. Save us from the situation that we are in. Save us, O oh Lord. And we see that with Peter walking on the water. You know the story very well. When he was walking, he started off doing good. But then uh, he looked around. He was like, ah, 
where am I and why am I here and what am I doing? You ever feel that way? You know, like you are all by yourself in this storm of life. But he started to sing because he took his eyes off Jesus. But you know, Jesus didn't take his eyes off Peter, not at all. Mm -mm. And when he cried out this short but effective prayer, Lord, save me, guess what? Immediately, immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and he caught him. And before you know it, in the blink of an eye, both of them were back in the boat. Jesus indeed saved him. And then we also have David's prayer in Psalms 59, which is also a Hosanna prayer. Lord, save us. While he was running from Saul for eight long years, running from the king. Imagine the king, the highest power and authority in the land, out hunting him to kill him. And he prayed, he prayed, he prayed prayed, save me from my enemies, oh God, rescue me from these criminals, save me from these murderers. And guess what? The fruit, God did exactly that. He preserved him for eight years. And not only did God preserve him for the eight years, when Saul was killed in battle and his son, Jonathan was killed in battle, God made David the next king of Israel. So he got the position, the power, the authority that Saul had to hunt him down. Now that belonged to David. He inherited all of that. Why? Because he patiently waited for the Lord to deliver him. He did not take matters into his own hands. You know, sometimes we want to do that. You know, we think we know more than God or we feel God ain't working fast enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we get impatient like Sarah and we try to figure out our own plan, but don't do it. Don't do it. Mm -mm. Sarah did it and the results were not good. You ended up with Ishmael and a whole mess that they are suffering the um, descendants of her son, Isaac, are suffering from what, from what Sarah did because she was impatient. And David, because he was patient, he was able to get the honor of having the kingdom and being the next king of Israel. And so after the Hosanna prayer, um, we also have the Sheal prayer, S-H-A apostrophe A-L, Sheal prayer, which is a petition, a request for something very specific. And of course, we see that with Hannah's prayer. Oh, we know that prayer very well. When she prayed for a son, oh God, if you would just give me a son, I will give him back to you for his entire lifetime. And that's exactly what God did. He gave her Samuel and he was a lifetime. He was a judge, a prophet, and a priest holding three offices and serving God and serving God well. But you know, the way in which God answered Hannah's prayer was abundantly above all that you could ask or think. And so Hannah not only had one son, Samuel, she actually had three more sons and two daughters for a total of six children. My goodness, isn't God good? <laughs> yes, he is. All the time, God is good. And then we also have this Sha'al prayer. We see it in Daniel's prayer for God to deliver the Jews from captivity as he prayed towards Jerusalem. Yes, that's what God did. I mean, David, uh, Daniel's prayer was a prayer of, of confession and asking for forgiveness and then asking God to fulfill his promise. And God did exactly that. 
All right, so now, now, that brings us to the New Testament. And so now, instead of Hebrew words, we are looking at the Greek words uh, that for prayer that we find in the New Testament. And last week, we started with the erotao prayer, erotao, and that is spelled E-R-O-T-A-O. Let me say that again, E-R-O. T-A-O, erotao prayer. And this simply means to make a request based on a close relationship with the one you are asking. Oh my, oh my. And of course, we pray to the Lord. So this has the idea of having a close relationship with the Lord, and that forms the basis of your prayer. And so we saw this with Peter and his mother-in-law. As a matter of fact, because of course, you know, Peter is one of Jesus's disciples. So you kind of don't get much closer than that. And in addition to being one of the 12, Peter was actually also one of the three in the in Jesus's inner circle comprised of Peter, James, and John. James and John being the two brothers known as the sons of Zebedee or the sons of thunder. All right. And so these three were up close and personal with Jesus so that when Jesus came to Peter's house and his mother-in-law was sick, well, it was a no-brainer. Listen, they didn't even need to make a request of Jesus. Jesus, understanding and knowing she had a fever, he simply went, touched her hand, and the fever left. It was just that simple. And then she got up and prepared a meal for him. Again, a sign of the intimacy of the relationship so that a request was not even necessary. And so in terms of this erotao prayer, we also see that with Peter's prayer. This was his prayer for himself that we just mentioned, the not prayer, Lord save me, when he was sinking, well, it was not only a na prayer, it was also an erotao prayer based on the close relationship he had with the Lord. So what we understand is that a prayer can fit into more than one category. So your prayer, when you pray, are your prayers erotao prayers? Are your prayers based on the intimate relationship that you have with the Lord? Is it erotao? And then we have another example of this prayer, this form of prayer with Martha's request to Jesus in Luke chapter 10. When Jesus was there with his disciples and he was teaching them. And where was Mary? She was sitting at Jesus's feet along with the other male disciples. Where was Martha? In the kitchen. And she was cooking up a storm. But then she glanced out of the kitchen, you know, through the little window, the whole little window. And she saw Mary sitting there and she says, well, what in the world is going on here? And she decided she going to put a stop to this because this is not right. But instead of going to Mary, you know what she does? She makes a request to Jesus. But check out this request. She goes to him. And I mean, you can just hear the attitude in her words. Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister Mary just sits here, sits here while I do all the work. <laughs> She's accusing Jesus. He's seeing something unfair and ain't doing nothing about it. And Martha is the one who is informing him of what the situation is, how unfair it is, and how Jesus ain't doing nothing about it 
and he is wrong and he needs to fix that immediately, if not sooner. And so with her erotao request, because she feels that she knows Jesus well enough to tell him, just to tell him what to do. So she says to Jesus, tell Mary to come and help me. Now, when you listen to that, that don't sound so much as a prayer, as much as it sounds like a demand. You need to tell her to come and help me. Ooh. You ever get so familiar with Jesus that you just demand that he operate? in the way in which you deem he must operate and then you tell him when and how he must do what you feel he ought to be doing. Whew, that's where Martha got off. So she went beyond intimacy into this area of being so familiar that she could just um, command and demand Jesus. Well, guess what? You can't tell Jesus what he must do. And this is the lesson that Martha had to learn. Listen, we cannot form Jesus into our image of what he should be. Mm -mm, not at all. Listen, we must come to Jesus empty. <laughs> That's right. We must come to him empty. Like, like Pastor said when he was talking about being moved by the spirit and being formless and empty, an environment that God's spirit can use to move in and to create exactly what it is he wants to create. And so that's exactly where, where uh, Martha found herself trying, trying to command God, trying to command Jesus. But mm -mm, nope, nope, nope. She, she couldn't form Jesus in her image. Quite the opposite. We have to come to him empty and allow him to form us in his image. And so this is the fruit of her, her request. My dear Martha, you are worried. See, he diagnosed the situation. You are worried and upset over all these details. The physical things is what she was concerned about. But Jesus informs her and tells her, there is only one thing, one thing worth being concerned about. And Mary, Jesus says, informs her, has discovered what that one thing is. And that one thing is the spiritual aspect. Yes, to sit still, pray, inhale, hear God's word, which is what Mary was doing. We can read God's word today because we have it in all different forms. But in those days, they didn't have um, scrolls to walk around with to to read God's word. So they had to hear God's word. And so here was Martha sitting at Jesus's feet as a disciple, hearing his word. And Martha did not like it because she was more concerned about the physical. Mary was concerned about the spiritual. And so Jesus informs Martha. Martha, the stuff you're worried about, eh, not all that important. The stuff that Mary is concerned about, that's the main thing. And she is making the main thing, the main thing. And so Jesus says, it will not be taken away from her. In other words, I'm not going to do what you want me to do. <laughs> I'm just not going to do it. Oh my, oh my. Has the Lord ever said that to you you've been praying but the lord said mm -mm, that request that you are making mm, that's not not according to my will i am not going to 
answer that request in the manner in which you desire. Listen, when God says that to us, we must bow in humble submission to his will and to his way, because ultimately, Father knows best. And so Mary was the one who was practicing the habit of the spirit, sitting still, praying, inhaling, hearing, in this case, God's word, inquiring of the spirit, giving thanks to God for all that he was doing. Mary was doing that as a healthy, dynamic disciple. And Jesus said to Martha, it ain't going, I'm not taking that away from her. So you have a choice. You could either go back and fuss about the things that is are not needful and necessary, or you could come and join your sister here to the one thing we're being concerned about. And the text doesn't tell us, but I think Martha <laughs> would have had to concede to Jesus's rebuke, gentle rebuke of her and take a seat with Mary. And then when Jesus was done, the two of them would just go in the kitchen, fix, instead of fixing a gourmet seven course meal, would just fix maybe a couple sandwiches and give to the disciples. And they would have been just as satisfied with that. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. And so we now have another example with um, Mary and Martha with this um, erotao prayer. And you remember the two sisters sent a message to Jesus telling him, Lord, your dear friend is very sick. And again, this indicated the close relationship because the request was not specific, but rather implied. Your, your dear friend is sick. So if he's sick, and you have all this power, come and heal him. But they didn't, they didn't say that part. They just said, he's sick. But Jesus delayed and Lazarus died. And they knew that Jesus had delayed. How did they know that he delayed? Because the messengers that they sent came back and told them, yep, he got the message. And they knew when Jesus got the message and they knew when he arrived. And they knew that he delayed coming. And so they were very disappointed when Jesus arrived. And both women at different times, but both sisters said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. It was a complaint. It was a disappointment because Jesus did not answer when and how how they wanted him to do it. Ever been disappointed about the when and the how of the answer that you got from Jesus? <laughs> and especially because you feel you do have a close relationship with him, why didn't God answer your prayer the way you wanted him to? Well, listen, Jesus remains sovereign. He does not step down from his throne for anybody. And he still knows best. And so what did Jesus do? Well, yeah, Lazarus died and Jesus raised him from the dead, indicating his power, his absolute power over the thing that scares us the most, his absolute power over death, and he also proved his power to keep his promise that because he lives, we shall live also, that he has the power to resurrect our bodies and then take us to heaven to be with him forever. So now we come to tonight to this prayer. Um, which is a, a prayer. Uh, the Greek word here is diomei, diomei, 
the D-O-M-E prayer. And it is a request out of a deep personal need. And this is a request where there is expectation of receiving the help. Not just an answer, but the, the actual physical help that is needed. And so a first example is the leper. There was a leper that made this prayer to Jesus. And it tells us in Matthew 9 that large crowds followed Jesus as he came down the mountainside. So remember, he had went up the mountain to give the famous sermon on the mount. And now he comes down the mountain and the people are still following him. And suddenly the text tells us a man with leprosy approached him and knelt down before him. And he says, Lord, this is the prayer. If you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. Wow. Now that's an interesting prayer, isn't it? Because there's a condition here. There's an if, if in this prayer, it is, there's a deep personal need because he's a leper. Leprosy is incurable disease, but he comes to Jesus nonetheless, but he comes with a condition. If you are willing. Now, why would he say that? Well, because there's a recognition in this leper that Jesus can indeed heal him. But there was a question in his mind and in his heart. Will he heal me? Will he do it for me? He has the power, but will he do it for me? Have you ever felt that? Knowing that yes, Jesus can do anything but fail. But the question is, would he do it for me? Am I worthy for Jesus to do this for me? Maybe the pastor, because the pastor is so much holier than me. Yeah, the pastor, yeah, Jesus would do it for the pastor. Yeah, Jesus would do it for the elder, for the bishop. But uh, I don't know if Jesus would do it for me. And that's where this leper was. But look at Jesus's response. It says Jesus reached out and touched him. He touched a leper. That was unheard of. Leprosy was highly contagious. You do not touch somebody with leprosy because you may get the disease yourself. But Jesus was not concerned about that. Mm -mm, not at all. He touched this man who had not been touched since he had been stricken with this leprosy. And Jesus not only reached out and touched him, but he spoke to him and he let him know in no uncertain terms, I am willing, be healed, be healed. And instantly the text tells us the leprosy disappeared. And now Jesus gives him some instructions. Don't tell anyone about this. Instead, go to the priest and let him examine you. Take along the offering required in the law of Moses for those who have been cleansed of leprosy. And this will be a public testimony that you have been cleansed. And so, you know, the text doesn't tell us you know, did he follow Jesus' instructions not to tell anyone? You know, most of the time when Jesus told people, don't tell anyone, they did not follow those instructions. They broadcast it to everybody. And you can understand why. For such a, a great miracle in your life, how in the world can you keep it quiet? <laughs> what the Lord has done for you. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And usually people would go out and just tell everybody what it is that Jesus had done for them. And I kind of think this leper probably did just that. All right. So that was the leper. But we also have an example in this father. This father who prayed this Diomai prayer to Jesus, we find in Luke chapter 9. And interestingly enough, 
um, Jesus was also coming down from a mountain when he was accosted by this father. And this time, Jesus had went up to the mountain and had been transfigured before his disciples where his clothes shone white like the like the the noonday sun and there appeared Moses and Elijah along with him so after that incident with Peter James and John Jesus came down the mountain a large crowd met Jesus and a man in the crowd called out to him why is he calling out to him because he has a my prayer and he says teacher i beg you see this is deep personal need i beg you i beg of you to look at my son and then he qualifies it he says my only child Mm -mm -mm. not only my son, but the desperation. It's my only child that I have and I am in desperate need. And then he explains what that need is. He says, an evil spirit keeps seizing him. So no, notice the words, keeps on seizing him, indicating that this is continuous. It happens all the time. And because of that, it makes him scream. Not only does it makes him make him scream, it says the evil spirit throws him into convulsions. Convulsions. And what's that? Well, convulsions are sudden, violent, and irregular movements of the body caused by involuntary contraction of muscles so in other words the boy has no control over what his body does when he is under the control of this evil spirit and then not only convulsions but he foams at the mouth and then it doesn't end there he says it batters him batters him and hardly ever ever leaves him alone do you hear the desperation in this father's d-o-m-i-e request to jesus and then he says this i beg he was begging jesus but now he tells him i beg your disciples to cast out the spirit but they could not do it and so Jesus responds to this father, to his request, and he tells him. Um, well, first of all, before he speaks to the father, he actually speaks to his disciples. You faithless and corrupt people, how long must I be with you and put up with you? Then he said to the man, to this father, bring your son here. As the boy came forward, the demon, see the demon just would not give him a break no matter what. The demon knocked him to the ground and threw him into a violent convulsion. But Jesus rebuked the evil spirit. He spoke to the evil spirit and he heal the boy then he gave him back to his father mm, 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 mm. the relationship of a father and son the close relationship although the relationship probably was not as close as it could have been because of this demon possession that the boy had but the love of a father for his child compelled him to go to Jesus and beg Jesus with this request, with this deep personal need. But you know, when I look at this story, it just reminds me, the love of this father for his son reminds me of the love of God for us as his children that there is nothing this father wouldn't do to help his son. And there is nothing our father wouldn't do to 
help us, each and every single one of us. And so with this Father's Diomai prayer to Jesus, we see this issue where he says, I beg your disciple to cast out the evil spirit, but they could not do it. So that was an issue. And why was it an issue? <laughs> well, the issue arose because Jesus addressed it and he said, you faithless and corrupt people. Now, we got to pause. We got to pause. Who is he talking to when he says, you faithless and corrupt people? Well, He's talking to his disciples. You might think he was talking to the heathen, but mm -mm, no, 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 no. He is talking to his very own disciples. Oh my, oh my. And he is calling them faithless. Wow. Now, if that's how Jesus described his own disciples, tell me, how would Jesus? describe you as a disciple how would he describe you as a disciple now that is not for you to share with anyone else but i do want you to think about how would jesus describe you in terms of being his disciple would he say would he say that you are a healthy dynamic disciple practicing the habit of the spirit or would he say to you like he said to them oh my you are faithless you don't have any faith whatsoever only you can answer that question. But the beauty is, if the answer is that you're faithless, you don't have to stay there. No, not at all. Not at all. You can change that by practicing the habit of the spirit. And then Jesus said these words, how long must I put up with you? Still talking to his disciples, you know. How long must I be with you and then put up with you? You could just hear the exasperation in Jesus' words. I am with you for so long and yet still you ain't got it yet. Oh, goodness gracious. Jesus was exasperated. And then he told them, he said, this kind, this kind of entrenchment in one's life can only come about and be healed through prayer and fasting. So, so are you willing? Are you willing to press to the mark? That's what we are supposed to be doing, <laughs> pressing towards the mark through the habit of the spirit. But are you willing to press to the mark through prayer and fasting in order to develop the faith needed to pray righteous prayers that have great power and produces wonderful results. Mm -mm -mm. I pray that that is your resolve on tonight to be able to do what Jesus says, to be willing to press to the mark through prayer and fasting and developing the faith needed to pray righteous, powerful prayers that produces great results. Shalom. All right, that is our session for tonight. Uh, we have a few minutes left. Um, if you have any comments, any questions, any insights that you might want to share from our lesson on tonight, 
Uh, we are open to hear from you before we close out our session on tonight. Anyone with any comments, questions, insights, feedback, <laughs> thoughts? Okay, you, you can unmute. Okay, I see we do have- Dr. Dennery. Go ahead, please. Um, okay. This is Sister Esther. I just wanted, I, I know I typed something in, but I just wanted to tell you this whole series has just been such a wonderful series. I thank you so much just for being so committed and, yeah. and so diligent. Thank you so much. I truly, truly have appreciated this lesson, these lessons over the last few weeks. Thank amen, you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for that comment. Okay, uh, Sister Betty? Yes, Dr. Denry, I, I just want to capitalize on what the lady just finished saying. I agree 1,000%. Uh, it's, it's just a such a special lesson that I would particularly like uh, for each lesson that you go over, what you what we went over the week before, because you're not just going to get it all just in that one week, that, that one lesson. And I have added information to my notes each time you do that, which is really helpful for me in understanding what, what's going on. And so yes. I just wanted to thank you for for uh, for getting it into our heads like that. For for going over it again each day. Good, 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 good. Thank you. Your your feedback is very helpful for me. You know, mm -hmm. even as I you know I prepare and so forth. So thank you for those comments. Okay, mm -hmm. I saw that uh, Renee had unmuted. So go ahead, Renee. Yes, Dr. Denry, thank you so much for coming up with these things because I never knew that there were different prayers. And with the examples, you make it very easy to understand and relate to so that we can use it during our own prayer time. So thank you for this. Amen, amen. And and thank, thank you for that comment. And because, you know, we are in practicing the habit of the spirit, you know, prayer as, is an important part of that practice. And so it becomes important for us to be able to understand the various prayers so that we can incorporate them in the in practicing the habit of the spirit. And one of the things that uh, you know I pray that we are getting is that prayers can be of different lengths, and the length doesn't necessarily indicate the um, the the. The, the, the power of the prayer because a three word prayer, Lord save me was very effective. <laughs> okay. So it's not much words and just, you know, the more words and the more you sound like, you know, you use fancy words and all of this and, you know, and you, that means you're, oh, you're all that. And then some, and the bag of chips. God ain't impressed with all of that. What he's impressed with is what comes from the heart from the heart is what impresses God and so when we speak from the heart and we speak to the Lord from the heart that's the kind of prayer that God is desirous of okay now I also saw unmuted um, uh, Vivian and Phil had unmuted so I wasn't sure if you had yeah. a comment go ahead I did. I, I really enjoyed this series. Um, actually, most of the things that were said were some of which I was going to um, say as well. Dr. Dennery, your presentation is always well prepared. It's always very easy to understand. Um, it makes you go back and think about your prayer life and have you been uh, doing what God wants us to do and practicing the habit of the spirit on a daily basis. And I just enjoyed it. I'm very thankful that I had the opportunity to participate um, for the majority of the weeks that this has been going on. And I pray that um, everybody was blessed by your presentations. 
Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for those comments. And um, I will be sending out the recording for this week and for last week. Um, you know, just a couple things. And I wasn't able to get the one out from last week, but I will be sending both of them out this week. So um, I have a normal distribution. If you're already on the distribution, you will get it. If you're not on the distribution and you would like uh, to receive it, you can text me, call me, email me. And I will be sure to add your name and your email to uh, the distribution list um, that, um, that I have. Okay, and as our time is, um, is gone, I just want to mention for those of you who may have logged in after um, the announcement, um, we are taking a break uh, for the summer for the month of August. And so this is our last session until um, September the 6th, right after Labor Day, uh, we will be uh, resuming again with our session. So uh, we give you some time off as well, uh, vacation time and you know um, time with your family and so forth. But we do not take time off from practicing the habit of the spirit, okay? So make sure that you do that every day. All right, so with that, let me see. I think we had a comment in the chat. Um, okay, yes, it just says, yes, you don't have to be long and drawn out. Just get to the point and speak from the heart with sincerity. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you very, very much. All right. So with that, we are going to close out for tonight. And we are going to ask Teresa from uh, Rise Community Church to close us out in prayer on tonight, please. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Gracious Father, our Father in heaven, who our be, be thy name. Father, we just want to thank you for this moment. We thank you, Father, that you have allowed us to step into the loving words and the studying and, and your precious brothers and sisters and our dear Dr. Dennery and Dr. Dunnigan and our dear pastor Adela Khan and all of those who contribute to our Bible studies. It's exciting. It's new for some and it's a refreshment for, for us all. So we thank you for that. Father, we ask that you just continue to guide us, yes. use us, and we will be with you. Thank you, Father. Bless our families, mm -hmm. keep us safe. Yes. And we're taking a little break, Father, but the most exciting part about that break is that we break, but you're gonna be with us always. Mm -hmm. So that's appreciation in our hearts and our souls. So, Father, until we join together again, our Bibles will be open, our devotions will be there, our prayers are a must, and we thank you, Lord Jesus, each and every moment of the day. All these things in your precious name. Amen. 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 amen All amen. right, so you can unmute so we can amen. hear your voice. Amen. 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 Good night, everyone. Thank you. Nice summer. Enjoy your summer. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night, Navy. Blessings. Thank you. Be blessed. Bye bye.